Hello my soccer universe. What a rotten weekend this was for this Milan fan. Uh, at least I have now the opportunity to wear this Napoli jersey, which didn't look like it. And it's kind of a weird week where, you know, um, Juve uh, started well, ended bad, Napoli the other way around, Inter also bad, then good. It was all so and so, up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> And we had many movements in the table. I think the biggest news definitely is that Inter are now on top of the table thanks to Milan uh, having a complete stinker at Spezia and Inter having a really strong performance uh, over Lazio. Uh, the biggest game nominally probably was Napoli against Juve, uh, which gave Napoli a win, although I have to say, under normal circumstances, Juve would have gotten out a draw. Other than that, the Roma teams, Roma again, not playing a top six side, getting a very impressive win, whereas Lazio, yeah, we saw they uh, lost already to Inter. We also had a cup round where we have a final that is pretty much the exact expected final um, that we had from the first uh, um, leg that we, Juve will face Atalanta and Juve putting uh, in another Juve-like performance. So I would say let's start with the Coppa Italia. Juve Inter, it was a game that I really, really, really wanted to see. I was looking forward to it and I thought it will be a fun game. Um, yeah, if you like defending, then you really like that game. Juve, I don't want to say they didn't want to attack, but they definitely knew that they had the lead. It is comfortable, we just need to sit back. And once Inter didn't get a, a justifiably, not, did not get a penalty, in the first half, I think the writing was already in the wall that this will not be Interstay. Inter then got a little bit too um, bent out of shape. I know there was an, at the halftime uh, Conte and Agnelli getting at each other's throats and all that kind, kind of stuff. It got really, really nasty. And again, I think over both ties, Inter probably should have gotten a draw out of the first one. And it's not inconceivable that they should have gotten at least, um, they could have gotten more out of, of this one. Inter definitely was not the worst team. However, Juve took care of all of Inter's mistakes and then uh, in a fashion that Juve actually doesn't want to be anymore. You know, this is the old style Juve just hanging deep, defending, defending, shot up shop and we go through. That's the feeling uh, that I had and it worked well for them and they frustrated uh, Inter out of it. The question of course is will be, this be the Juve going forward. But so with that, Juve over Inter in the cup final and Atalanta had really not much trouble with Napoli and this was kind of this um, big week for Gattuso where, um, you know, uh, semi-final then playing against, against Juve, he needed some results, he didn't get it there. Uh, you know, Atalanta looked a little bit, then turn turned on, 10th and 16th, uh, Zapata and Pessina, made it, made it to nil, could have been more. Napoli got back into the game through Lausanne goal in the 53rd, but when they were pressing for the equal, Pessina makes it 3-1, done and dusted. Uh, and we have Juve playing Atalanta in Rome for the Coppa Italia final on the 19th of May. Atalanta, I think, has, is the home, nominal home team for that. Um, as for the weekend, yeah, I mean, the first few games, I didn't see much of it. I had all my eyes on Napoli Juve. And I have to say it was, well, I thought it was an open game at first with uh, where Napoli fought themselves into the game. And then they got a penalty that, hmm, I can see why Chiellini does, doesn't like it, but he really goes with his hand fully into, into the face. I knew this is gonna be a pen penalty. I think it was pretty pretty clear that this was, was gonna be called by VAR, uh, but I totally can see why Chiellini didn't like that call because you know this is kind of a defender trying to feel where, where the point is. But your hand should not be as high, and hence penalty was um, given. And who steps up? Insigne, who had missed only penalty against Juve, but he takes. Responsibility on his shoulders, steps up, pulls it in to internet and then greets uh, his wife, girlfriend, whoever, uh, for Valentine's Day with a great uh, celebration. Then 
In the second half, I think at the beginning it was still a little bit more leaning Napoli who now could hold back and uh, kind of hit your you view on the car counter. But then uh, as far as the game went on, it was more Napoli hanging on and you were having really some great chances. I think once Ronaldo heads directly at the keeper, Morato a similar chance. So I think it probably a 1-1 would have been deserved, but it was a huge win for Napoli. And I know no one to talk about this Gattuso against Pirlo. This is my Milan midfield, my favorite, favorite one. Yes, one is still failed with Milan, the other one not so much. Although I still, for me, Pirlo is still more a, a Milan player than a Juve uh, player. But I understand where his personal journey went. So yeah, big win, big win for Juve and at that ah for Napoli. And at that moment, I was thinking, wow, if Milan now can get the three points at Spezia. You can distance yourself from Juve and in addition you put quite some pressure on Inter and the Inter it was not a foregone conclusion the way Lazio was playing. Uh, maybe some points and Milan can go into, into the derby with having enough points to even uh, deserving a loss. And then at this very moment I thought yeah but we had this situation already once or twice this season and Milan did not take advantage of that. I also knew that Spezia will be a tough opponent because they are they of this high pressed Spezia reminds me a lot uh, of Lusk, how they are playing, uh, really pressing them high, putting uh, pressure onto the team, which Milan, we saw it against Atalanta, really doesn't like. So I already thought this will be an iffy affair, and but quality should shine through. And then I also thought, uh, and this was a stupid thought, you know, Milan has been on top of the table for so long and I, I, I was thinking, it, to me it seems inevitable that Inter will go top and I thought I'd rather have it around now than two weeks before the end of the season. And I kind of jinxed Milan maybe in a little bit, but I have to say uh, Milan did not show up at all. Spezia deservedly, Milan didn't have a shot on goal, this was a stink of a performance. Uh, that I, I cannot tell you how disappointing this performance was. Spezia running out fully deserved as 2 0 winners. Maggiore uh, in the second half uh, gets the goal win. I mean, this has been coming, and then Bastoni, no relationships to the Inter defender. Uh, after after, after Frigger slammed it on it, Donnarumma has no chance. I also think there was a lot of talk around Milan, you know, Donnarumma not extending his contract for now, the negotiation, and this is an important negotiation, but you know, with Mino Raiola, it's never that easy. Then Slatan with the Sanremo Festival, it was, and then of course the Derby, I think the f as much as Piola said that they were focused on, on the game, I think there were so many side issues that I don't know. This would have been important to pick up those three points. Maybe this was a kick up the backside. Milan has a really tough program ahead with uh, Red Star away from home, Inter in the derby at home, then Red Star at home, and then Roma away. Those four games in the next two weeks will uh, go a long way of showing me where Milan's season will be. Um, if they lose here, I think it will be hard to hang on for the Champions League spot. I has to be said. Especially with Roma and you know, I know Milan at the moment is a top uh, two team, but of the, when I look at them, the way they are playing, um, it has been the whole season. I mean, I'm enjoying that, that, that they're winning and it's some when it's gelling, it's beautiful, but I always feel that the, the wheels are always close to coming off and maybe Roma could actually uh, exploit that. Roma. What can I say? Very quickly, they had their lead. Uh, in very two two goals, one by a penalty, fifth and twenty fifth, and um, goal this allowed in the third, the third. But Udine came out, tried to uh, come, come, come back, um, but Roma at the end uh, put it away with three nil. Was an easy win. Roma, if they don't have to play a big the top six, top seven team, Roma is one of the most entertaining sides out there. Atalanta get a late win thanks to a goal by Muriel in the 90th minute, who came on uh, only in the 668, was not a great game. And then very late, uh, Kali Rivulu would have gotten a penalty, and then when you look at the replay, uh, yeah, minuscule thing, and the penalties take, take off because you see the ball was played first. So yeah, Atalanta gets a win, Cagliari really in trouble, and as I said, those two teams, that I, those two jerseys that I enjoy so much, they will not feature most likely next year's Serie A video. Sampdoria with a win over 
uh, Fiore Fiorentina, um, the winner by Cagliarelli in the 71st. Uh, Sassuolo 2 1 over Crotone, getting maybe a little bit back on track, and then Inter with a rather impressive performance over Lazio. I mean, it has to be said, the first half was very even, maybe at the beginning, definitely advantage Lazio. However, then uh, Hood makes a foul on uh, Lautaro Martinez in the box, and it looks like a perfect tackle when you realize that the trailing leg is actually going uh, first into the legs of Martinez. And so, yeah, the penalty is given, Lukaku steps up and con converts it. But I thought that Lazio was very well in, in the game, but just before the halftime, another freak egg. I mean, that tackle, if it works, it's a beautiful tackle and it's not a penalty penalty. Uh, and then a freak accident uh, in the first half, I think Brozovic plays the ball, uh, the girls gets a collect with a Lazio defender, and suddenly Lukaku is free on goal, puts it in 2-0. Totally not in the cards, this result, and unfortunately changed the complexion of the game to the point where Inter were now the clear favorites uh, to win that one, but I think it was a lucky 2-0 lead because Lazio really, really was playing well. Can I also say Inter was playing with Chinese lettering on the back? I know Chinese New Year is celebrated now. I know Chinese owners, although they want to sell because they're in a whole heap of financial trouble and you know, that might not bode well for Inter from all that, that, that we hear, but I really, really, really don't like when you put different lettering systems when you play in Italy. If you play in China, put Chinese names back on there. Great. If you play in Russia or any other of the series, Sir, Sir Bulgaria, I think you should play with Cyrillic letters back on there. If you play in Italy, you damn should uh, use Latin letters. This is such a marketing gimmick that I'm not even sure that Chinese fans appreciate all that much. And PSV. Yeah, uh, Lazio, then with a very weird, we seen at the beginning of, of the half where. Um, the teams line up on the field, suddenly Inzaghi runs onto the field and takes Hood and Lucas Leva off and makes the exchange right there and not in the dressing room. That was weird. Uh, Inter missing then a chance, I think through Lalo La Matias and then a free kick is given that um, uh, is deflected by Malinko Savic into the net. I was hoping, yeah, Lazio can get back, but now three minutes later Lukaku gets the ball and Team rolling through the defense of Lazio and then has even the smarts to see that over there is, is Lautaro Martinez 3-1 and then Inter played it home rather safe. Very impressive performance, very impressive Lukaku. His best conquered brush was definitely assist to Lautaro Martinez, but he made the difference. And now we can look forward to a great derby. More on that in a little bit. If you look now at the standings, Inter going top. Eh. Uh, a lot of changes. Roma also going ahead of Juve. Have in mind, Juve has the game in hand. Napoli and Atalanta going over Lazio, but they are now all on 40 points. If you look at the table, it is so super tight and exciting in Italy. I cannot tell you what. No, no not much exciting on the, excitement on the bottom of the table because Torino Fiorentina just should be good enough to stay ahead of Cagliari and Parma as much as it hurts. I would. <sighs> Yeah, I don't want to have Torino Fiorentina going, going on either, Cali and Parma, that a little bit hurts, to be honest. If we adjust the tail, we actually see that Juve would jump ahead of Roma, but that game in hand is against Napoli, which um, they just beat. So, very, 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 very in interesting here. We can also see that despite this uh, really bad performance by Milan, they are still the uh, overwhelming surprise of the season, whereas Fiorentina, especially Torino, are underperforming. Big, 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 big time. Expect extensions, you saw it already there. Juve now slightly ahead of Milan and having a little bit more of an advantage going to the second spot because their rating is a lot better than Milan's. It has, has to be seen. Roma still could move, but you know, let's say Inter wins the Derby, then Milan and Roma uh, would only be, given that the ratings stay uh, the same uh, and Roma wins, then uh, Roma is only one point point behind and then that game could actually change the course of the season there. And Atalanta now, Napoli and Lazio are really not out of it, although it still, still seems that at, the, at this moment, Inter, big favorites for the title, and then the other two will have safe championship spot for the last championship spot is a four-way race. The Serie A is the most exciting league at this moment in Europe, although France has a really nice title race themselves. Speaking of the next round, the big one is the Derby. Two against one, Sunday, three o'clock, 
bar none, watch it. And then, as an aperitif, more or less, you can watch Atalanta against Napoli. Two really great games. Lazio uh, Sampdoria, another one that I find rather interesting. So a uh, lot of fun stuff to watch. I also see we have a Monday evening game, which doesn't look, uh, which I don't like because that's Juve, and that will a little bit mess up with my schedule for the videos. Because I chose to do the Serie A video now because it has the least consequential video, uh, uh, the least consequential game with um, Parma and uh, Verona still playing in there as compared to Spain, Portugal, and England. So yeah. This is what we'll have for the next week. Let me know what you thought about this round and how excited you're about the upcoming coming week. It is a big one and I'm afraid that it does not come at the right time for Milan to, to, to be honest. Drop a line below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.